This is October 19 of 2020, and the study is Luke chapter 23. Uh, first, we're going to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I ask you to bless everyone within the sound of hearing my voice, Father. I ask you to put us all in hedge of protection and saturate us with the blood of Christ. Father, I ask you to give us your word and only let your word come out through my mouth and over the airwaves, Father. I ask you to bless your word to our hearts. I ask you to touch my eyes and bless my eyes that I have perfect vision and perfect understanding and and, uh, and we'll be, be able to speak without interruption. Father, please keep it cool and quiet inside and quiet outside. And we thank you for another day to be in your word in Jesus' name. Amen. And the whole um, multitude of them arose and led him onto Pilate. And they began to accuse him, saying, We found this fellow perverting the nation and forbidding to give tribute to Caesar, saying that he himself is Christ a king. And Pilate asked him, saying, Art thou the king of the Jews? And he answered him and said, Thou sayest it. Then said Pilate to the chief priests, and to the people, I find no fault in this man. And they were the more fierce, saying, He stirreth up the people, teaching throughout all Judea, beginning from Galilee to this place. And when Pilate heard of Galilee, he asked whether the man were a Galilean. And as soon as he knew that he belonged unto Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him to Herod, who himself also was at Jerusalem at that time. And when Herod saw Jesus, he was exceeding glad, for he was uh, desirous to see of him a long time, a long season, because he had heard many um, things of him, and he hoped to have seen some miracle done by him. And he questioned with him in many words, but he answered him nothing. And the chief priests and scribes stood and vehemently accused him. And Herod, uh, with his men of war, set him at naught and mocked him and arrayed him in, in gorgeous robe and sent him again to Pilate. And the same day, Pilate and Herod were made friends together. For before they were at enmity between themselves. And Pilate, when he had called together the chief priests and the rulers of the people, said unto them, um, Ye have brought this man unto me as one that perverted the people. And behold, I, having examined him uh, before you, have found no fault in this man touching those things whereof ye accuse him. No, not yet Herod. For I sent you to him, and lo, nothing worthy of death is found unto him. I will therefore chastise him and release him. For the for of necessity he must release one unto them at the feast. And they cried out all at once, saying, Away with this man, and release unto us Barabbas, um, who for a certain um, sedition made in the city, and for murder was cast into prison. Pilate, therefore, willing to release Jesus, spake again to them. But they cried, saying, Crucify him, crucify him. And he said unto, him, unto them a third time, Why, what evil hath he done? I have found no cause of death in him. I will therefore chastise him and let him go. And they were uh, insistent with loud voices requiring that he might be crucified. And the voices of them and of the chief priests prevailed. And Pilate gave sentence that it should be as they required. And he released unto them him that for sedition and murder was cast into prison, whom they had desired. But he delivered Jesus to their will. And as they led him away, they laid upon uh, one Simon, a Syrian, uh, coming out of the country, and on him they laid the cross, that he might bear it after Jesus. 
And there followed him a great company of people and of women, which also bewailed and lamented him. But Jesus, turning unto them, say, said, Daughters of Jerusalem, weep not for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For behold, the days are coming in the which they shall say, Blessed are the barren and and the wombs that never bear and the paps that, uh, which never gave suck. Then shall they begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, Cover us. For if they do these things in a green tree, What shall be done in the dry? And there were also two other malefactors um, Led with him to be put to death. And when they were come to the place which was called Calvary, there they crucified him and the malefactors, one on the right hand and the other on the left. And Jesus uh, and said, Jesus, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they parted his raiment and cast lots. And the people stood beholding, and the rulers also with them derided him, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself, if he be Christ, the chosen of God. And the soldiers also mocked him, coming to him and offering him vinegar. And saying, If thou be the king of the Jews, save thyself. And a superscription also was written over him in letters of Greek and Latin and Hebrew. This is the king of the Jews. And one of the malefactors which were hanged riled on him, saying, If thou be... The Christ save thyself and us. But the other answering rebuked him, saying, Does not thou fear God, seeing thou art in the same condemnation? Thank you, Holy Spirit. And we indeed justly, for we receive uh, the due reward of our deeds. But this man had done nothing amiss. And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou cometh into thy kingdom. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. And it was about the sixth hour, and there was a darkness, the darkness over all of the earth until the ninth hour. And the sun was darkened, and the veil of the temple was rent in the mist. And when Jesus had cried with a loud voice, he said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. And having said this, he gave up the ghost. And when the centurion saw what was done, he glorified God, saying, Certainly, this was a righteous man. And all the people that came together um, to that site, beholding the things which were done, smote their breasts and returned. And all his countenance and, and all his acquaintances and the women that followed him from Galilee stood afar off, um, beholding these things. And... Behold, there was a man named Joseph, a counselor, and he was a good man and a just. The same had not consented to the counsel and deed of them. He was of Arimathea city, a city of the Jews, who also himself waited for the kingdom of God. This man went unto Pilate and begged the body of Jesus. And he took it down and wrapped it in linen and laid it in a sepulcher that was hewn from a stone wherein never man before was laid. And that day was the preparation and the Sabbath drew on. Thank you, Father. And the women also which um, came with him from Galilee followed from afar off and beheld the sepulcher and how his body was laid. And they returned and prepared spices and ointments and rested the Sabbath day according to the commandment. Whoa, thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. There's so many things I could say. Just thank you. Okay. Uh, well, <laughs> oh, tell me what the veil of the, uh, of the voice of the people. Tell me what the voice of the people when in one accord, when the masses come together, can do. We see that throughout the whole chapter, especially the end of the chapter. 
if the voices would get together and come together as one, it even says about that throughout the word, and especially uh, in Acts. I mean, I know it's talking about giving out the, you know, when people accepted the um, Holy Spirit, but it's the same thing. We, the people, get together. We can command our government. We, the people, are what put them in office, and then they forget. Think about that. We need to correct that situation and ask God for forgiveness. Oh, Lord. So this mass voice made Pilate crucify Christ, even though he and Herod didn't find any fault in him. We see that the trial was rigged and bogus. Okay, we do see this. As well as way too fast for any justice. But before the foundation of the world, this crucifixion was planned. Remember, uh, it doesn't matter what we do or what we say, that the uh, sovereign will of God will be done. And remember, too, he will permit, which is a permissible will, he will permit you to do things or people to do things or things to be done in order to get his sovereign will accomplished. Remember that. We see that there, uh, there were general attempts to kill Jesus before his crucifixion. See, but you know, when you see it's not time, let's look at John 8 and then verse 59. John 8, Holy Spirit help me. Verse 59. Then they took up stones to cast at him, but Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple, going through the midst of them. So he passed by. And you see that God blinded their eyes because it wasn't time for him to, uh, it wasn't time for him. Luke chapter 4, verse 28 and 29. Let's go back to Luke chapter 4. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Luke chapter 4, verse 28 and 29. And they all... Uh, let's see, in the synagogue, when they heard these things, let me read that again. And all they in the synagogue, when they heard these things, were filled with wrath and rose and thrust him out of the city and led him onto the brow of the city, whereon their city was built, that they might cast him down headlong. You see, there's multiple attempts on his life. Even in the, uh, well, when you look at the, for instance, the uh, Lost Books of Eden, you can see over and over and over, Satan tried to kill him. And then tried to accuse him for his friend falling off the roof and dying. And, you know, so, God, help us, Jesus. Hallelujah. But he was it was not time for him. And you see that John chapter 7, verse 6. Let's look at that, John. Chapter 7. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Verse 6. Mm, here in my face. John chapter 7, verse 6. Then Jesus said unto them, Mine time is not yet come, but your time is always ready. You can see that this plan before this foundation of the world, remember, because God, in God there is no time or space or distance, and he knew, because he's the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning of the end, the first and last. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for that. Okay, the big question is about today's time. Where are the Christian voices? Just like, um, no, nah, it might have been a year ago or so now, uh, you know, uh, President Trump said, look, there's 5, 250 million Christians in the United States. Where are they? Where are their voice? Right? So Jesus, help us to be bold in your word and to have no fear. It's just like uh, Isaiah. Let's look at Isaiah 41 and then verses 1 to 11. Isaiah okay, 41.
Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And then uh, Isaiah 41, then 1 to 11. Isaiah 41, 1 to 11. Keep silent before me, O lands, and let the people renew their strength, and let them come near. Then uh, let them speak. Let us come near together uh, to judgment. Um, who raised up the righteous man from the east, called him to his foot, gave the nations before him, and made him rule over kings. He gave them as the dust to his sword, and as driven stub stubble to his bow. He pursued them and passed safely even by the way that he had not gone with his feet. Who has wrought and done it, calling the generations from the beginning? I, the Lord, the first and the last, I am he. The isles saw it and feared. The ends of the earth were afraid, Draw, drew near and came. They helped every one his neighbor, and every one said to his brother, Be of good courage. Um, so the carpenter encouraged the goldsmith, and he that smoothed with the hammer, him that smote the anvil, saying, It is ready for the soldering. And he fastened it with nails that it should be that it should not be moved. Whoa! Now that's not a picture of Christ being on the cross. I don't know what else is. But thou, Israel, art my servant, Jacob, whom I have chosen, the seed of Abraham, my friend. Awesome. Thank you, Father. Thou whom I have taken from the ends of the earth and called thee from the chief men thereof and said unto thee, Thou art my servant. I have chosen thee and not cast thee away. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen ye. I will help ye, ye. I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Behold, all they that were incensed against thee shall be ashamed and confounded. They shall be as nothing. And they that strive with thee shall perish. Oh, God forbid. God, help us to repent. Help us to get over that pride. Independence, you call it. Okay, just to interject, let's look at verse 30. Let's go back to um, Luke chapter 23 and go to verse 30. Then shall they begin to say to the mountains, fall on us, and to the hills, cover us. Oh, they're going to be in misery. No, but I don't want anybody left here. Okay, I'm ashamed of myself when I read verse 34, and I know with strong assurance that I need a Savior. I repent for the unforgiveness I held onto for so long. Let's look at... Uh, Luke 23 and then verse 40. But the other answering rebuked him, saying, Does not thou fear God, seeing that thou art in the same condemnation? Oh, Lord. If Jesus went through this immense agony and still gave forgiveness, why can't I? Seriously, why is it so hard? It's because the Satan, the demonic, gets a hold of our uh, gets a hold of uh, our emotions, and if we don't recognize that, and if we don't humble ourselves and ask for forgiveness and ask Him to show us, ask God to show us any spots in us that He does not approve of, or any dark spots, so I say it, show us, show us our dark spots, show us what does not make you pleased, and I ask you to please show me and that I can repent of them, that remind me that I am being chastised. So I can have a closer relationship with you in Jesus name seriously you know why is it so hard it's pride let's look at that pride is one thing there are demons behind this 
issue always behind Pride. And then Pride masquerades also as Independence. I can do that myself. I don't need no help. Let me do it. You don't need to do it. Go away. No, that, that is pride. That is a demon behind it. That is a spirit of control. And the, when you, it, the more and the longer that you hang on to those demons, they'll get stronger and trenched. Remember that. You don't want that either. So Revelation cha uh, chapter 21 verse 27 tells us uh, no unclean thing will enter into the kingdom. Let's look at that. Revelation 21 and verse 27. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for showing us. Revelation 21. Oh, you are so good, Father. Revelation 21 and then verse 27. And there shall in no wise enter into it anything that defileth neither whatsoever worketh abomination or maketh a lie but they which are written in the lamb's book of life now how can we be sure beyond the shadow of a doubt that that when people come against us or demons whisper in our ear we can tell them get behind us we know we're saved you ask father god in the name of jesus to show you truth and he will he said, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I ask you to infill me with your Holy Spirit. Give me assurance, 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 Father. Your word says every good gift is from the Father above, and in, is him, in, in him is no shadow of turning. Father, we stand on your word now. We ask for every gift that you have. That means gift of gift of healings, gift of tongues, gift of discernment of tongues, gift of discerning of spirits. I... Uh, all of your gifts, Father. And then show it in our um, fruit. Show it in our actions. Show it in our thoughts. Show it in our, our behavior, Father. In the way we treat others. In the way we do our business dealings. That's what Paul kept saying. By them. And Jesus said it to by them. You will know their fruits. What does he mean? Because we have the love of God in us. We show forth love. We show forth caring. Okay. And those sort of things, but ask Father God to fill you with evidence of speaking in tongues. That why no demon and no person on earth, no demon in hell, can tell you that you are not saved. And I've been reiterating that over and over and over throughout most of my videos, in fact. And I just wanted to, I want to drive it home that when Christ calls and we meet him in the air, you do not want to be left behind. So humble yourself. You think, oh, I don't need to. I don't have nothing to for, ask for forgiveness of. Oh, yes, you do. Jesus said, I come to fulfill the law, not to abolish the law. And he goes further even with the commandments. He said that the law, it says, thou shalt not covet thy, uh, that neighbor's wife. This is an this is a example. And Jesus said, if you lust after a woman in your heart, even though you don't do the deed, even though you don't act on that lust or that thought, it's still a sin because you thought of it. And if you look at uh, the, uh, what is it, the wisdom of Hermes? It's called Hermes. Um, I think it's the wisdom of Hermes or something like that. It's in the Lost Books of Eden. He went through the same scenarios over and over and over. He's seen this beautiful woman and he started, whoa, how beautiful. I'd like her to wife. Whatever, and he started thinking these things. Oh, and then he started thinking, my sister is beautiful, huh? But he was lusting in his mind, in his heart. And uh, God set him straight in that scenario. And that is not put in, obviously, that's not put in the King James Bible or the canonized Bible. But like I said, you keep looking at the King James. You learn it, learn it, learn it. Then you can go, you know, and, and compare it to other non-canonized or the you know the apocrypha, the books of Eden, um, the Dead Sea Scroll, all those things. And by the way, I never got into Dead Sea Scrolls. Like every time I tried to read it, there was no spirit to it. Spirit was not behind those words, and I'd fall asleep. So I wound up giving it away. So, anyways, uh, just just some thought to interject there. <sighs> Thank you, Father, for that. So, Job chapter two verse two tells us Satan walks the earth. And he accuses us day and night, you know, just like in Revelations. But let's first go to Job chapter 2, verse 2, about in the middle of the book. 
Job 2, verse 2. It's after Esther. Job chapter 2. And by the way, the, the uh, Job itself, the character Job, he held his ground when he was being attacked. He didn't understand it, but he just trusted God and, and kept on going. Praise you, Father. That's a testimony in itself. Job chapter 2, verse 2. And the Lord said unto Satan, From whence comest thou? And Satan answered the Lord and said, Be, From going to and fro in the earth. And from walking up and down in it. Look at that verse. From going to and fro on from the earth and walking up and down it. If you do not think that there is another world inside of the earth, the spiritual world we're talking about, spiritually, then you're sadly mistaken. Go and do a word study on hell. There's I think there's five words. That the, the different uh, meanings to each of the word that is translated hell, you know, uh, Hades and, um, and I, I can't remember them offhand, but anyhow, uh, do a Google search and ask what the words for hell are. H uh, Hades, Gehenna, uh, Sheol, and, and I, I think there's two other ones, but anyways, I those are the ones that come to mind. So you can see clearly that in the, the that uh, he walks in and out of the earth, he walks on the earth. And now, mind you, he's not Christ and he's not Father God. Father God's in outside of time and space, obviously. But his that means that his spirit knows all, sees all, and is all powerful. He's omnipresent, omnipotent, and omni omniscience. And, and that's what we're talking about here. Satan, can he is not that way, but he can do damage because he's got all these fallen angels, to, all the angels that he brought with him. Remember, Jesus said, Behold, I found, in fact, I think it was in Matthew, he was saying, he said that I seen Satan fall from heaven with lightning. Well, he, he sees, he's seen all that. He was in that area, that, that space there that's got no time, distance, or space. So he's seen it. He's seen the beginning and the end. He's seen Satan fall. So then that's why we can go back and say, look, you know, he's telling us right here that, that he walked in the earth and out of the earth and on the earth. And like I said, the angels that came with him, fell with him, took his side, were, were deceived. Okay, there's a hierarchy there too, just like there is on planet earth with our military and with our government. You know, there's a hierarchy, the president, vice president, uh, and then on down like that. You understand what I mean? And he's got that same setup. See, Satan is an imitator. He's not a creator. Only God is a creator. So he's an imitator. So he imitates what God does. And so, and, and, and that's why I said there's a good side and there's an evil side. There's a natural and a spiritual. Anyways, he can send, he sends his, his people that are his demons, his angels, the ones that are under him, the ones that he lied to or, you know, that came with him. They could have come with him. But they lie, he lied to them either way. Anyhow, he sends them out to do his dirty work. And then they go and report to him. And that's for someone to understand that. that uh, we know that, And that can go further too. I don't want to keep getting off of uh, Luke chapter 23. Uh, but, okay. It says, let's look at, look at also Revelation chapter 12, verse 10. Let's go back to the Revelation. Oh, you are so good, Holy Spirit. 12, Revelation 12, Revelation chapter 12, verse 10, and I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now is come salvation and strength. And the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ for the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. Hallelujah. And then when you look at uh, verse 11, they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. Holy, 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 holy. Hallelujah. All righty. So after Christ Jesus died on that tree, did they realize who he was, who he is, 
who he claimed to be. Most, yes, they did. Most of them had their eyes open. I'm sure there were still scoffers, scoffers because when you look back at uh, the at uh, the epistles, say, and Peter and in uh, all of them, but especially Peter and in in uh, uh, Paul, the Apostle Paul, they're telling us that in latter days, false teachers will come deceiving the very elect if they could. Now let's see here. It also says in the word, remember this, that Jesus said, my sheep know my voice and they will follow. Another one they will not follow. If you are truly surrendered to him and truly Holy Spirit filled, you will not follow this world. You will not follow the, the, the demonic voices as voices because you know the difference between good and evil. Hallelujah. Ask every day you get up. In fact, say every day when you get up, Father, thank you for another day. I can see your beautiful creation. Thank you for waking me up to spread your word. Thank you for letting me study your word. Thank you for giving me revelation, knowledge, wisdom, and understanding and experience with you. In Jesus' name, thank you for letting me speak it. Touch my eyes, my eyesight, my understanding, my speech, Father. Touch where I go and who I speak to that they know that you live in me. Let me be bold. Give me your boldness in Jesus' name. So, there you go. Thank you, Father. So after Jesus died, you know, you wonder, did they uh, know? You know, and uh, let's look at Luke chapter 23, 46 to 48. Let's go back to Luke chapter 23. Okay. Go to 46 to 48. And when Jesus had cried with a loud voice, he said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. And having said this, he gave up the ghost. And as now when the centurion saw what was done, he glorified God, saying, Certainly, this was a righteous man. And all the people that came together to that sight, beholding the things which were done, smote their breasts and returned. See, they knew, they knew, and also the people knew that the Jews did it out of spite. The leaders did it out of spite because they didn't want to give up their preeminence. They didn't want to let go of the praise of men. God help us. Humble yourself every day, every day, daily, several times a day. It never hurts to do it several times a day. Ask for forgiveness in Jesus' name. Okay, praise Jesus. Thank you, Father. So the scriptures in uh, 1 John 3 and then 1 to 3 takes on a deeper, more meaning, you know, more of a meaning, more of a deeper meaning. Let's look at this. Okay, 1 John chapter 3, verse 1 to 3. 1 John chapter 3, verse 1 to 3. Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it does not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is, and every man that has this hope in him purifies himself, even as he is pure. Well, how do we purify ourselves? Let me ask you that. How do we have this hope? Which we know the hope is Christ Jesus. We know the mystery is Christ Jesus. So how do we purify ourselves? How do we become holy? How do we become justified? How do we become, you know, it's just how do we become sons of God? How do we do that? We ask for forgiveness. We stay in the posture of repentance. Hallelujah. You stay learning his word. You learn how, what authority he's been giving you. He given you, you learn how to use that authority. You learn how uh, to, how he talked to people into demons. You learn how to cast out demons. These are examples. You study, Paul says, study to show yourself approved, a workman that needeth, needeth not to be ashamed. You tell Timothy this, but it's go for, it goes for all of us. See? See the difference? Stay in his word. Renew your mind daily. Hallelujah for that, Father. Thank you, Father. So thank you, Jesus Christ. And it's all about him. It's all about him. Hallelujah. I thank you this day. Father, disagree with my prayer. If you agree, awesome. If you don't agree, you don't have to. Just don't say nothing at all. Well, I'm going to say a prayer here, and then we'll go back and look and see if I can add anything else before the video runs out. 
Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we come before you. We ask for your forgiveness of known and unknown sins. We ask that you forgive us for not forgiving ourselves. And we ask you to help us to forgive those that have hurt us, those that have wounded us, Father. Whoever they may be and whatever they have done, forgive us, Father. We ask that you apply your doing power to those soul wounds. We ask you to erase from a cellular level all the trauma that we've endured through our life, Father. And replace it with your Holy Spirit. Father, we ask you to apply your dunamis power and to forgive the sins of my ancestors and the people that have hurt me, Father. As well as myself. Apply your dunamis power to our soul wounds, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Now, I want to look at a couple things here that, um, if I can find them real quick, I should have put a note here. Um, oh yeah, that's what it was here in, uh, in, uh, Luke 23 and then verse 32. And there were also two malefactors with him to be put to death. Now, let me tell you something. I'm just going to throw us in and interject this here real quick. In the lost books of Eden, it talks about that because it goes all the way back. It starts from the birth of Mary and her life. Then it goes to the birth of Jesus. And then the, you know, because we know that after uh, Joseph was woken up the second time after, Bar well, let's go to where Mary and uh, Jesus and Joseph were there. I think it was in uh, Egypt. It was in Egypt. But anyhow, yeah, the second time because the, the wise men are coming to look for him. I could be get, getting confused because there was a, when he was born and the wise men, it was, he was two years old. And when they came in, they opened their gifts of mirth, gold, and frankincense. And uh, mind you, we know that there was more than three. I'm just going to throw this out here for free. More than three magi or wise men because they traveled in caravans. You couldn't have traveled alone because the thieves, which I'm going to get to these malefactors in a minute, they were the ones or part of a group that uh, would uh, would uh, beat and murder and maim and just take, like rob anybody on the road, after you know, especially after certain times in, in the day or in the night, rather. So anyhow, uh, in the books of Eden, it talks about this, and Jesus is coming back, um, and he's... It might be two years old, but it says he's an infant. So they, in their timing, like an infant is still two years old. So um, it, uh, it says that Jesus spoke as an infant, you know, to these this, this man here, the the man on the right side of Jesus when he was being crucified. The man, that same man, was with another man, and I don't know if it was the same man that was hanging there with the one on the right, because there was one on the right hand of Jesus, and one on the left. The one on his right side was one of the robbers, and he kept it real quiet. He told everybody to be real quiet, and he didn't alert his fellow uh, robbers, his fellow abusers, thieves, to the, to the passing by of Jesus and Joseph and Mary. So he let them go on by because Jesus said, I will remember you. Something to this effect, uh, I will remember you. Uh, Something to that effect. You have to look that up. Look it up what it says. But he t 